This video is sponsored by Bossa Studios. The Bradwell Conspiracy is a narrative-driven first-person experience and was initially teased back in August 2018. Only recently, on the 5th of October, it landed on Apple Arcade. Today I present an in-depth review of the Bradwell Conspiracy and will show some straight-out gameplay from my iPhone XR, 2018 11-inch iPad Pro, and an Apple TV 4K. You can click on the link in the video description to download and play the Bradwell Conspiracy on Apple Arcade right now. And there shouldn't be any spoilers here as I'm showcasing very early on footage. First, let's go over the story. The story here is intriguing and while it can be a little predictable at times, it shines in the way of clever communication between the two main protagonists. This makes the Bradwell Conspiracy different from other puzzle adventure games out there, but I'll go more into this aspect later on in the review. The opening here reminded me of the original Unreal game. You wake up after a big explosion has occurred at the Stonehenge Museum fundraiser in the UK in the year 2026. As you progress further ahead, you will quickly find yourself trapped in a hidden underground complex beneath the Stonehenge. Hello? Anyone there? Say something if you're there. I got your distress signal. I'm here to help. But you're not alone. To escape, you will have to work together with a young woman, Amber, who is trapped elsewhere on the grounds. The world crafted here is stunning, atmospheric, and deliberate, from all the chaos inside the building to the puzzles on offer. It does a good job of portraying a disaster and the impacts it has on individuals, press, and the environments. Character performances by Rebecca Lachance playing Amber and Abuka Ba Salem. He is the person behind the guide. They both present a professional and genuine performance. In fact, if you recognize Abuka Ba Salem, well, this is because he is the voice behind Bayek from Assassin's Creed Origins. In the induction section, which is very early on in the game, people have had mixed opinions on the narrator, who is actually Jonathan Ross. He brings a very strong English accent. However, I'd say the intention for this narration was to be a little bit irritating and to make fun of tutorials or inductions in general. I personally found it very funny. Well done for completing the Bradwell personality test. Go you. Want to know what's in your mind? Check out the screen nearby for the results of your personality test. Now let's talk about gameplay. The gameplay here is quite different. For instance, the main character's voice has been badly damaged from the explosion, leaving the possibility of speech out of the question. Larynx damage from smoke inhalation detected. Speech will not be possible. Please do not attempt to speak. Amber can talk to you directly and can assist you with puzzles too. But since you have no voice to communicate back, players will use smart glasses and can take photos of the environments or puzzles. Based on what you send to Amber, she will reply, attempting to guide you through the facility or help with solving puzzles. I found the aspect of communication in this game to be very interesting, reminding me of the relationship seen in Firewatch or the Stanley Parable. Amber brings a strong and humorous personality, and I love how she will ask you to take photos of what you're looking at, or how she will react to the ones you sent her. The funniest thing that you can do is just completely spam her with photos. Give it a go. Stop the spam, please. This is a puzzle game though, so how does this aspect work here? Well, typically it revolves around a 3D printing mechanic. Many puzzles require you to scan an object and then duplicate it many times in order to find a solution to the puzzle. However, to duplicate, you require substance from bricks that look like sponges or other objects found in the environment. This can be a very big challenge, which is a good thing, but also can be a bad thing. Too often I found myself looking up guides online as I had no idea where to find the last substance or what to do next. 
then I discover that it would literally be in the same room. But then again, I'm not very good at puzzle games, so some might not even have this issue. I found myself having the most fun with the Bradwell Conspiracy on my Apple TV 4K. For obvious reasons, I could play on a large 42-inch display, sit back on my couch and have a PS4 controller in hand. As much as I've said in my previous videos, it was just like playing on a console. And really, I think we can call this a gaming console in many ways. My next favourite platform to play on was my iPad Pro. The Super Retina display brought out all the details for the Bradwell Conspiracy and was the best portable option to play the game. And then I'm looking forward to playing the game on my MacBook Pro as well as access to custom graphics and the ability for higher frame rates. The length of the game is quite short at around three to four hours. I would have loved if there was just another hour or two of gameplay as this would allow for a bigger build up to the story's ending and in turn would bring a few more fun puzzles. Perhaps in the future, Bossa could add some type of new content, whether that be additional story DLC content or perhaps a co-op puzzle solving mode that is still similar to the NPC relationship in the campaign where two people are in different locations but have to communicate to each other using these smart glasses in real time. So, have you played the Bradwell Conspiracy on Apple Arcade yet? And which device? What do you think of it overall? Remember that you can download the Bradwell Conspiracy by clicking on the link in the video description. Thank you to Bossa Studios for sponsoring my channel, I really appreciate it. I've been looking forward to playing your game for about a year now and I'm just having a great time with it. Subscribe and turn on notifications to be alerted about upcoming Apple Arcade videos. Anyway, thanks for watching.